Ta da. All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, we're now getting we in. You. Cool. Yes. Good morning to you. Good evening to you too. Good morning from my perspective. Uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in today. <laughs> Looks like people are already queuing up a lot of uh, different questions, but uh, some of the fun stuff leading up to this is. Uh, I, you guys definitely have um, a fun report together and people are like, I'm really interested anytime I have a chance to see Marco and Alberto in the same virtual room together having conversations. So um, I'm, I'm happy to have you both on. Alberto, I know it's your first time. Marco, you've been on a few times. So I appreciate you both joining on today. Now, Marco. Now might... we don't hear Marco. <laughs> yes, we're, we're just, we're playing a musical chairs with everyone. This was no, my fault. My Sorry. Curiosity. No. There you go. All right. No, it's, it's okay. totally fun. Yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> it's like the the game of teams um, bingo where you you see w uh, what phrase yeah, is said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah. So just Wonderful. like I was saying, thank you for uh, both of you for joining today. I think this is going to be a, a really fun topic on uh, I think more of soft skills, but also just like content creation yep. online. Um, so I'm, I'm very of excited course, yeah. to, yeah. to hang out on this. Go ahead. Go Alberto. <laughs> no, I was just saying that it's a nice chat. So let's see what happens. And we are here just to talk about yeah, what yeah, yeah. to fight a bit, you know, relax. And for for a bit of background, people tuning in for these two, like I, I'm pretty sure everyone in the chat knows who you are. But for those who might not, um, they've they've been yep. in this space for a very very long time, and uh, you're one of the most prolific authors and content creators out there for both of you. As far as like, I think pretty much your entire career now is building trainings. Um, and, and now with your yeah. very successful YouTube channel, the books that you've authored. So uh, you probably generated more content out there than most other, if anybody else that I know of within the you know, larger Microsoft ecosystem, at least within BI. Um, and uh, I thought this would just be kind of a great topic to talk about some of the ins and outs that goes into not only producing content, but also making, you know, with DAX certainly, making it something that's easy to understand, helping to explain complex things in a way that's uh, that's relatable and digestible in a lot of senses. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this will be a really fun just kind of, you know, water cooler conversation as we go into a lot of these subtopics today. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, I'm, 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 I'm happy that you are in the middle between Alberto and <laughs> me because usually we fight all the time because yep. uh, someone yeah. writes something and the other one to write something else. And so we have to, you know, the, the process is that we have to fight until we find a, you know, something we both agree. And See, actually, this is a value, but it's very expensive. So. <laughs> well, and I have buttons, so like if I need to, I can, uh, I can click and, and pause either of you guys. So like I, I have a way to put the videos in timeout. There, there's, there's a pause button for them. So if needed, okay. I can, I can click the master button. Yeah, but then where's the fan? Right. Yeah. Ex no, exactly. Just yeah. <laughs> the fun is the fight, right? Yeah. The, the fun part is getting the right face that can get frozen in a certain expression. I could just leave for a few uh, seconds. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I think uh, for for starting this conversation off, uh, I just maybe a little bit of history of, of some of the things like where, what got you started with wanting to like even go into contents. Because yeah, I know because you used to be like a SQL maestro, I think both of you, and we're doing a lot of um, design and other stuff in, in terms of that. So what kind of made you decide to start going into blogging and everything else? Oh, Ooh. Alberto, you want to, I mean, to, my story is too long. So, and actually I'm too young. Have so hour. there is a conflict <laughs> in dates. I know, but no, because we have different stories that at a certain point, uh, Cross the line, and you know, we 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 met each we knew each other for a long time, but actually we had very different career path before we we started to join our effort on SQL BI. And I started writing in Italian, actually, about development with uh, an, an an Italian audience. Even though at a certain point I started to write also in English, always for development things. Uh, I wrote a couple of books about link which is a part of dot net mm -hmm. and then we and then i started to work with the with the with the data and teaching about uh, analysis services and so on and when i started working with alberto we simply had a uh, the need for a repository where we wanted to include our notes and article and blogs and so it started as a blog post then we needed a place where we wanted to put tools and 
downloadable files. And so we started SQL BI this way. And the very beginning, it was sqlbi.eu. But then I, I had the chance to get a .com website. And so we, we made it more international. And, and so that, that, that is how it started, right? For, for, from my perspective. So I, I started with, with, with writing for something else than the blog, then books for, for, for this, even though I had other experiences before. And they're, they're yeah, very different in a lot it, of senses. Go ahead. I think it's useful also to share, I mean, other consideration because the reason, I think it's interesting to try to understand why we, we write content, why we publish the blog, yeah. what's the, the reason why we do all this stuff. And I think a detail that a lot of people, very skilled and very good people do not understand is that being good at doing something has uh, not the same value as uh, being recognized as good in doing something. So yeah. if you just start blogging and pushing your ideas and whatever comes to your mind, uh, then people will start to recognize you. And this has a lot of benefits. But first of all, you are forced to confront it with other people. You need to talk with them. You need to read their reviews. Uh, you, you talk with other people and then you get recognized. So people start to uh, appreciate what you do. And this starts, uh, this starts, in my opinion, the career of people that then end up with YouTube videos, blogs, uh, and stuff like that. I always tell to the newbie when I meet them during conferences that there's a big difference between being in the speaker room in a conference or outside of the speaker room. Because as soon as you start speaking and you go public and you, you chat with other speakers, then you enter uh, the environment of uh, skill people who are recognized. Uh, and that is a big push for your career and uh, your knowledge and being recognized by other people. That's why I, I think that everybody should have a blog because it's full of good developers. Well, not everybody, of course, but <laughs> it's full of good developers out there. Uh, it's, it's just that we don't know them. We we don't have an option to get in touch with them. So sharing your ideas uh, to yep. me was uh, I, I, it really changed the way uh, I think about technology and I think about everything else. Uh, maybe not everything else, but at least about <laughs> IT and job, my job. I you know maybe it's the same for you guys as well. But similarly, like getting started for me, that the first few times that I started blogging. Um, it would take a lot of effort for me to kind of figure out what I wanted to write, like coming up with, you know, a bloggable idea. I, I hadn't thought of it ever in my life of, you know, things that would be uh, do that. But it, it was a muscle that I started to develop. And now it's like I, I just write down almost in, any time I do a unique thing with the tool. Like I just write it down to, to think about later. Is that something that other people could appreciate? But now it's, I, you know, I have a long, continuously running list of, you know, cool ideas to do, you know, and, and that they just you know, come up naturally where I should write this down. So I, I, in a sense, I started journaling a lot more every time I'm working and I have any, uh, you know, unique solution for a client problem that, oh, that's going to be a great video idea to do. Uh, but that's something that took a while for me to kind of learn how to write down or also, you know, identify all these different things, you know, that, um, you know, it, it used to look like nothing to me. And I, now I realize, oh, here's all these little diamond topics that I can actually now pick from as I de uh, develop. But that became a lot easier for me with time is just uh, actually capturing those. And, and I encourage people to do is every little thing that you do, just write it down. Even if you only do one of those 10, just write down those things, review them like at the end of the week, and then start turning those into larger ideas that can then become your videos and your blogs. Um, and uh, Rob Colley, like back in the day when I uh, you know, authored at Power Pivot Pro, it's like the, the two things that you want to try to do ideally, so you're not just like copying other people's ideas, is, like, is the idea that you're wanting to blog about unique and if it's not unique, does it give a unique perspective on it? Like it, you still might be doing something 10 other people have done, but are you given a different spin that at least is providing some new information that people are learning from without just, you know, trying to ride the train of, you know, um, you know, co copycatting somebody else. And as long as either of those are met, then like that's something that in theory is worth sharing that at least some people might want to read about. Yeah, but besides, you know, the comment that I quite never read anywhere Mm. Is somebody commenting something like, uh, oh, I did know that. Or, oh, yeah, that was boring. I already knew it. Because if you already know something, you just don't read the blog. And that's fine. You, you go ahead and you skip it. 
And it doesn't matter how simple uh, what you are doing is, uh, just write it. I agreed. You yeah. know, and it, it doesn't have to be a t 20 step thing. Sometimes like a, a quick no. tip or a, a little itty bitty blog um, can, can work very well. I'm going to adjust your gain up just a little bit. It's somebody was coming in still low. So added about five decibels. So I think we're good. There yeah. you go. And that thing, it also helps to me <laughs> thinking about go ahead, go ahead. the kind of stuff that I read about topics that I do not know. So let's say that you need to do, I don't know, gardening, or, or you want to cook a, a recipe, or you want to do something. I go for I go searching for on the web for really really simple stuff, and I do appreciate when I read uh, a very simple way of uh, solving the problem that I have in that moment. So that's the same with business intelligence and DAX and everything else. There is nothing that is too simple not to blog about, and it's and probably on... easier to start. Exactly. Go ahead, Marco. Now I, I think that uh, I mean I, I try to you know I try to provide you a different perspective. I try to be you know <laughs> provocative in a way. Uh, I mean we we talk nice things, uh, community. We want to share, but the reality is that one good reason to write down what to discover, even though nobody reads it, is because uh, you can have a way to demonstrate your skill uh, mm. versus someone else. Uh, the day you have to do. Um, uh, you know, an interview, because uh, if you have a blog as a, as a, yeah. even just before the interview, I can have an idea about what you do, and and just the fact that you write down what you discover provides me a lot of information in a much easier way than I could get from an interview, right? So, it's a good investment. So if you look at the, if someone says, ah, why should I do that? I can go to the movie, I can do the movie theater, I can, I can watch Netflix, I can do something else, right? Uh, it's fine. Agreed. But if you, if, you, if you cut some time, constantly over time, so not just a bar in you know, two weeks, you write 20 blog posts and you don't write anything for, for other three years, that doesn't make any sense. It's useless. Whereas if you consistently produce something month by month, just one blog post per month, not too long, short, with what you discovered that month. And if you discover two things, you just have some material for the next month. So just don't be in a rush to, to, to publish something. In the long run, after three years, you have 36 blog posts, which is more than any technical person can read before the interview with you. So if, if you just think about that, you provide a lot of information that says, okay, this is, this is a guy or a, or a girl that I have to interview. This is someone I want to interview because there is something that is interesting. So I think it's a good investment. And then, of course, it benefits the community and all this good stuff. But from an individual perspective, if, if you, you say, you, you just think about yourself, that's a, it's a good idea the same. So it's even just, you, don't, you don't care about sharing with the community, just do it for yourself. It's, it's a good idea. I agree, and I to to your point, it's it acts as its uh, its own expert resume in a sense. Like that's something that I, I every once in a while I still actually have a client who contacts me, but that asks me for a printed resume, which I haven't really had one in probably four years. But I have a little you know email template that I send to them that has a link to my blog, my YouTube channel, this and that. Like here's my resume. Like here's 180 videos that I've done. Here's 75 conferences I presented at. So like it. It acts as a, a, a web presence that just explains your expertise very easily. Um, also to that note, I think it's really, the two things that I, I love to be able to do is uh, a lot of the videos, and especially because I do a file with most of mine, um, sometimes if I'm trying to think of a pattern that I did a year and a half, two years ago, I don't remember it in my head, but, oh wait, I did yeah. a video on this and I can open it up and I can watch, I've even watched my own videos sometimes a couple of years later and oh, that's right, okay, I did this to do that thing. So it's an archive of my own skills that I've even relied upon sometimes for future projects. Uh, or it's great when a client like, hey, how do you do this? Send them a video, uh, uh, send them a link to a blog post and like, I don't need to write an email, just watch this video. It explains exactly the question that you're trying to solve right now. So uh, there's a lot of like, yeah. as you said, personal uh, benefits to, to this, you know, out, outside of obviously the MVP program and the yep. uh, community contributions. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I agree. You have I agree. no idea how many times it happened that I was searching for a solution to a problem. <laughs> 
And uh, I <laughs> just Googled it uh, and it turned out that I had find the solution of that yep. problem. I blogged about that maybe two years ago. <laughs> I said, oh, that is a smart yeah. solution. I didn't remember that. Even experts can't remember everything we've that... done. No, of course. There's another perspective that, in my opinion, is important about blogging, writing, and doing field educational content. That is, you learn a lot by describing what you are doing or what you are trying to achieve to somebody else. And you are forced to do that when you blog. Okay, you remember that we decided to start writing the first book about DAX. And at the time, we didn't know DAX. We were just starting to learn. We didn't have a very good understanding of uh, of the language, but we thought that uh, if we were forced to write a book, uh, that was the best way to learn all the details and all the ins and outs of the language, because you need to describe that in a clear way. And you cannot just skip a part, like, uh, hey, I don't understand this entirely, but I can go on with my job anyway. If you are writing a book or if you're writing a blog post, you need to go as deep as you can in order to be able to describe that the right way. So to me, writing books and writing blog posts and stuff like that is a, is a perfect way to continue learning because uh, you're forced to do that the right way. I completely agree. Yeah, I, just looking at the comments, I just wanted to, um, uh, Thomas asked, uh, no, not Thomas. I mean, someone asked that how much time Mark. should you, should we dedicate to, yeah, Mark. How much time know. should we dedicate to, to blog posts? Uh, well, I would try to optimize the, the time to do everything that is not a technical content. Let, let me explain. If you don't have a blog, you might spend a lot of time trying to figure out which platform, uh, which layout and all the stuff. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, if you have a LinkedIn profile, just start writing on LinkedIn. It's a zero cost. I mean, you don't have to do mm -hmm. anything. You have already the layout and you just produce the content. And by the way, LinkedIn is not a bad idea. If you don't have an audience, uh, even just being present on LinkedIn is the easiest way to get exposure in a much easier way compared to, you know, creating a blog post from, you know, from scratch and then having to create an audience. Assuming that you want to create an audience, you may be not interested in, in creating an audience and that's fine, but maybe participate in some social media and put a link to your blog post just to, you know, just to spread the word will help other people to find your, your blog and also the search engines to index what you, what you wrote. And, and this is useful. So in terms of time, again, from my point of view, it could be even just two hours per week or per month or per quarter. What is important is that you you have to you have to keep a, a, an ongoing commitment on that because if you if you do one week and then you don't do anything for one year and then you start one year later you forgot everything you 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 are completely disconnected so you have to create a, you know a, depending on your you know your your available time you have to 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 make a commitment on that if you want to create something that will be your portfolio of of content that can be used for presenting yourself to a customer or to an employer or, you know, whatever. But the idea is that the being constant is, is, is what creates something that grows over time. Because what you wrote two years ago, uh, unless you continuously write about the, last, the latest news, uh, I mean, there are many other websites that do that. Just write about what you discover about how oh, to yeah. solve a problem that would be valid for many years is is not something that you know has an expiration date that <laughs> that is there when you write it. The, the the phrase to those two points that you just made at the end, um, uh, and I got to get back to like what Rob Colley taught me about blogging. The there's like there's the hot topics and the slow burners. It's the the things that like are you are you blogging about something that's you know oh new feature came out yeah you're gonna get tons of views in the first uh, like month yep. and then it's going to just disappear. Now, if you can get the magical scenario where it's yeah. both a hot topic and it's also going to be relevant for like many years to come, that's a gr that's like the the golden thing that you could uh content that you can do about. Yeah, but in general, you typically aim towards one of those two. And like, you know, I I've, I've done both. I'm sure you guys have also done both with features, yeah. but it's uh, overall it's it's better to have something that's long lasting like a pattern or or some solution that 
in two years from now, unless they patch or, or add a new feature, this thing's still going to be relevant um, in the, the the space that you're blogging about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we have the, the analysis we made and we do about the content. It, it's very rare that you can combine the two. Usually something that is good as a, as a hot news uh, is not good in the long term. Very rare exceptions, but there are really exceptions. So, yeah, I agree. Um, and Alberto, to your point as well, like I, I liked your comment earlier mentioning that it uh, and the fact that you guys like said you in writing your first book, like we knew Dax, but we weren't, you know, we didn't consider ourselves masters in that, but you learned through doing that. Um, I mean, I, I take the same approach to I, I don't do nearly as many um, Dax videos because most of the time there's you and a few other people typically get most of the things covered in that subject. Uh, but when I do, I want to make sure it's done right. So, you know, it's one of those things where I occasionally put off those harder blogs because I know I have to do research and I'll I'll confirm with other MVPs, hey, is this right? Is there any other way to, to say that this could be wrong? Um, because I, I don't want to, you know, spread misinformation. But I learn more typically on those because I, I have now completely confirmed this is a way to do something and a solution for that where I maybe thought that way before, but now it's like, you know, confirmed with at least a couple of other experts with that. So I, I grow uh, with a lot of these topics as well. So, you know, I never go into them for people thinking maybe we do, where we're just immediately like, we know what we're talking about. Like, no, we're, we're doing research and we're spending time to make sure that it's right and asking people to see if they can find what's wrong with what we're wanting to present. So we're not, again, spreading misinformation if we're doing it correctly. Yeah, yeah and that eventually that becomes a job by itself because that <laughs> yeah. is actually what happened to us to us we didn't start as teachers we didn't start as book writers we start as consultants and then over time with the increase of the audience the increase of the books the increase of the trainings we switched our career and today we could say that we are much more teachers than anything else but that is not how we started it does this. we liked what you do and we continue doing that yeah, it, but right. It, it, for example, how do you start creating a blog post? So <laughs> it might be useful also to share. I mean, really, the entire process. Because when I think about what I do, I I follow completely different paths. If I need to explain something very simple, or if I need to explain something very technical, or if I want to write a blog post or a book, uh, the, the process is very different. It's not the same. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the medium that is presented and has many, like, there, there's a little bit of extra flair that goes into YouTube. You know, books have to be a bit more kind of dry and exp expl uh, explanatory. Um, for, for me, I think I, I start with the idea first. Um, I mean, I mostly just do, do videos, but uh, I've also done courses and other stuff. But it, it, it has to be framed to the audience in mind. So once I have an idea um, that I've written down, usually just the first thing reviewing to make sure, oh, is this something that actually exist for other people, um, meaning like I, I actually do check online to make sure I'm not accidentally uh, repeating like verbatim what somebody else has done. I've I made that mistake a few times where I've published that and then a couple people will link down. I did this exact same video or like a week ago. Oh, so that's bad timing, but maybe I should just do a quick Google search to see if this feature has already been mm -hmm. discussed in a way. Um, and then it's framing it in a way that determines do I actually need to pair this with with an article to help maybe explain some of the technical code is this something that I can summarize really quickly because it uh, I, I want it to be explained uh, as shortly and sweetly as possible in terms of least information too much information people get cognitive overload and lose track of the steps or hard to follow it so like that's typically my goal is to try to get it that you know start to end in, in a as straight of a linear like just easy path as possible uh, to the end result of that um, I used to do a lot more like blogging. Uh, I I hate having to to edit my own uh, documents for like grammar and punctuation and syntax and all that. So what, it's one of the reasons that I switched to videos is I just found it easier, um, honestly. But uh, those are like I'd say some of the primary considerations that I uh, you know consider for that is you know with the number one really being is who is the audience and is it being framed in a way that will be understood by them? Because it's easy for me to get caught into my own head and while well, I'm writing this really. Am I writing this just for myself and explaining this to myself, or am I really explaining it in a way that the, you know, average consumer of this will will understand easily? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good question. 
Uh, I did have a couple of uh, things in here that I can actually pop up. I like Matthias's question. Is it true that your book sold more than the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> no. That would be that would be amazing if it if it was true. No, 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 no. Absolutely no. Uh, I think that you have to figure out the, the the difference in magnitude between a technical book and, and, and you know a science fiction book, which is a subset of you know the general novels. So just to give you an idea, uh, a book about technical stuff like we cover could go from a few thousands copies all around the world to a few 10,000 copies. Okay, so very successful books, technical yeah. books, a few 10,000 copies. But you will never reach 100,000, just to give you an idea, right? Yeah. Now, if you go into science fiction, you start to talk about millions, of course. It depends on which kind of science fiction, but the very successful science fiction books could be, because I have seen a few numbers from yeah, book publishers, it's something like, uh, yeah, maybe 10, 20 million, you know, when you are very, very big. So, you, you know, two orders of magnitude more. Now, when you, when you talk about, you know, bestsellers, you talk about hundreds of millions of copies. So another order of magnitude. So it's a completely different game, right? I, I think he's and, just giving you like a, a nice compliment for the book, saying it's, it's an incredibly good seller. And also it's probably the fact that they both have guide in there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, see. so I, I don't know the, the copy sold by the Hitchhiker. Hitchhiker I, I'm uh, going to guess probably never, tens, yeah. tens of millions for that thing. It's going to be higher. Than yeah, probably the, the, a little higher. Yeah, yeah. It is very, very successful, that. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did Marx. Yeah, so, and I talked a bit about uh, kind of how I start with a blog, but uh, another good question uh, from Michael is actually for daily routines for any of us. Like with everything we do, and I'll even maybe broaden it up a little bit to just like having to run a business and then create content. Like, yeah. You know, how do you keep keep your sanity? Well, the I I think that I will I would try to split what we do today with what we did until maybe five six years ago, right? Because today we only produce content, so our main activity is to produce content that then is uh, delivered as books or articles or or videos, so regardless of the way we monetize what we produce, but our job is to produce content, right? So you cannot do the same uh, thing that we do if you just have a blog. So if I go back in time where our main job was to be consultants and to you know work on projects with deadlines and all this stuff, then at that point, when we had to find the time to, to write blogs and so on, yeah, the the... The routine was to to cut time. I mean, it depends on your habits. Someone is uh, uh, is more comfortable in doing this in the night or maybe in the early morning. Mm -hmm. I, I know people that do both. So I know people that spend time in uh, you know before going to sleep. Other people that wake up two hours earlier and, and spend you know one two hours just in uh, getting updated or following social media or doing something like that. And of course, sometimes you, you might have to do that during your, your, your work because while you are working, you have to search for something and you may, maybe you look at you know, the feed or a blog that you follow or you find something interesting that you will, will, uh, will catch up later. Um, so I think that that is a, a more common thing. What we do today is basically it's our job so we, we we have to plan when we have to record uh, the videos or uh, oh we had the newsletter we had to prepare the article for the newsletter but you can imagine it's just you know like any job we have our s schedule and in order to improve our productivity we have uh, uh, people who work with us that help us with everything that is not producing content so from the website uh, customer support or whatever else, uh, yep. like any company. I don't, I don't think it's very different from from a company that sells uh, uh, other other things. We are just in the in the uh, educational business, or better, in the in the business of improving the productivity of people that work with, in this case, tabular models, because this is uh, our yeah, but niche market Marco, where we work. While you were talking, I was thinking maybe the question was a bit more personal than that. 
that is what yeah. is your daily routine uh, that is quite different than what the daily ah, routine okay. of a new blogger should be I know one thing I that Marco does, is and I got to run. Yeah. I know one thing that you do, Marco. That I, I'm similarly like you. You you have an inbox zero yeah. um, uh, effort. Oh yeah, every yeah, day, yeah. Which, which which I also yeah, do. Yeah. Like I, I don't like things to collect. So every reminder, every email, basically all notifications that I have on my phone get reset to either the next day or or into the future. That way I can yeah, start yeah. each day clean. And otherwise, it stresses me out. Like by the time I see like 65 reminders and emails, like it it becomes a burden for me. So I I keep things moving out to dates and times as as needed um and i i remember like a year or two ago you, you mentioned that uh, that if i recall yeah i mean short, uh, uh, go ahead. alberto is different yeah alberto yeah. i think is the uh, alberto is different than what i do I, <laughs> I yeah i have the inbox zero rule and th th that doesn't mean that i can answer to everything i simply you know of dispatch everything and, and very quick triage of the of the incoming email and and, and usually all the other thing that you do when you follow this path is whatever you, you can reply in five seconds, 10 seconds, do this immediately because it, it takes more time to, you know, to delay that, to review that Agreed. later. It's just a waste of time. Uh, but I think Alberto is different from, from this point yeah, of view. I right? use a completely different way of doing my job. That is, <laughs> I don't care at all about my inbox. It can be as full as it needs. I simply do not even think about that. Yeah. Uh, it's typically full of emails that maybe are, I think I have seen years, they stayed there without having any answer until at some point you say, well, that guy is probably never going to wait for an answer. Yeah. But because I don't, if I need to concentrate on something, I'm, I'm a formula engine, I'm a single task. I can do only one <laughs> thing comparison. at a time. So, if I wake up in the morning and the task of today is writing several chapters of the book or just work on some demos, huh? that's my job for today. And there's nothing that can disturb me from that. Marco hates it because uh, maybe I, yeah. I delay a lot of stuff huh? just because I'm focusing on something that is, in my mind, in that specific moment, more important. And yeah, it's very, very different from what Marco does. He's able to work on yeah. different things. I need to be concentrated only on one thing. And I, I do want to, to to point out something that both Marco and Alberto you have said is the uh, fo focusing on something. Um, Marco, you mentioned in, in terms of like so that blog comment and actually getting content out and daily routines, uh, like having time to do that, whether or not it's in the morning or the evening. Um, but I like the, the comment that I wanted to make uh, just on on that idea is that if you don't set time aside to do that, whatever it is, content creation, anything else, it's like the can or the email that keeps getting the snooze. It gets kicked down the road. So like that should be treated like any other yeah. work or a business meeting. Like I have four hours every week from Friday from like one to five, like my, my end of my week, that is reserved. Unless there is a fire five level emergency from a client, nothing ever gets scheduled in. That is my time to catch up on blogs, to do whatever I want, but it's just, it's me time just to, you know, to do that as needed. Uh, but if I did not have that on my calendar, it would get filled with other stuff and I would never get around to doing stuff. So whatever yeah. day you want, time of day you want to do it, if you want to spend X number of hours per week, put that as an actual reserve time on your calendar and have that as dedicated time because it, just thinking you will get around to it, you never will, especially if you are getting into like doing your own stuff for business. There's always a list of things that you need to do, and there we go, and, and only this much time yeah. to do it. So uh, that that's my number one bit of advice: is reserving literal time on your calendar to do, to do this stuff. Uh, was a huge yeah, yeah, like yeah. eye opener for me. You know what is scary for both me and Marco is when we start doing any kind of job, like an article or a book or whatever we are doing at the moment, we're writing some content, and the other one. Uh, starts a call saying, hey, I have an interesting problem to to look at. Because as soon as we say there is an interesting problem, whatever <laughs> we are doing is immediately delayed. Yeah. And we start yeah, spending yeah. hours just to that's try great. to understand exactly what is happening there. Yeah. So that's I definitely love... something that breaks any kind of rule. I just love that you essentially you, you both geek out over like a problem that you want to like solve to, uh, when, when you encounter that. So. <coughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I, I tell you a, a small secret. Sometimes I receive email um, 
about people who say, oh, I have this, I've wrote this in the community, in the forum, and nobody replied. I take a quick look, uh, and if I know that it's something we know, um, but the replying could would require too much. So if it is just a link to an existing article, I do that. If replying will require, you know, 15 minutes to explain the problem or to analyze the model, right? Because sometimes the problem is that something that has a, you know, sometimes the problem is understanding the question. What we ask for the comments on our web website uh, is, is simple. We say, okay, if you have a question, just formulate the question using the model of the article. Because this way we know the model uh, and, and, and we can immediately contextualize the question. Otherwise, most of the time is understanding the context. Uh, so if you need dedicated time, sorry, you have to buy consulting time because otherwise I, I cannot spend, because it's impossible. Otherwise I should, you know, the, the, the 24 hours in a day are the same for everyone. So I should make a choice. Okay, I, I, I answer to this one and not to the other one. Why? I, I don't know. So the, the choice we have, we, we, we Instinctively, instinctively make is to re, to focus on something that actually doesn't have an explanation. So if there is a problem that says, "Oh, this is strange," this is one plus one equal to three? Uh, there is something wrong. So something like that. When we see something like that, we stop and say, "Wait a minute, what happened? Yeah. Maybe it's a bug. Maybe it's a behavior we didn't understand before." And sometimes this, we discover that what we wrote was wrong or was, were, was not completely correct because there is a, a scenario that was not considered in, in the description we made. And so our theory is not complete. And so we have to, to review that. And so and that, that, that is, a, I think, also the difference because when you write an article, you can always fix the article online. The problem of a book, if you write a book, you cannot <sighs> fix it. Once it is published, it is published. That's it. Yeah, you can, you know. Same with the video, a unfortunately, rata, but, too, yeah. which is annoying. Yeah, like that, same that's with the, the video. one. I, it, it's the one thing that bothers me about YouTube is I cannot replace the video with an updated version of it. I really wish they would allow it to do that because there's been times where, like, I have to delete and redo the whole thing, you know, uh, just because there's that one spot that I don't want. Yeah, so I, 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 I like the fact that with a blog article, at least it's on, you know, WordPress or however you host it, so it, it's easy to just go and edit. I ask you a question. If you if you go on YouTube and you look for mm. for a topic, and you find a video, mm. it is five years old. Will you open it? It. I will first try to find something newer. If there is nothing newer written <laughs> about it, then I still yeah, might think indeed. that's that the, the topic hasn't so, changed potentially. Yeah. So, for this reason, from my point of view, the the <clears throat> the video content is something that has a reduced. Um, lifetime compared to an article moreover you can update the article and if you do yeah. that you can get a, an updated date of publishing mm. which improves the visibility on the search engines and sometimes we, when we realized that we, we said okay so we have articles instead of creating a new article we said sometimes we said okay we already wrote it so we don't have to write no it's it's something changed it's better to update an existing article rather than to create a new one because uh, uh, if you create a new one, you start from zero in terms mm -hmm. of you know incoming links. Uh, this cannot happen for the video. Uh, the video once it's done is done, and you can just create yeah. a new one. An and, updated and, like and it is hard expansion to, to yeah. It. yeah yeah yeah. I I, I agree, yeah, but and that's a yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought of the SEO um, in search engine optimization for people listening in. In, uh, in terms of changing the dates, because the video, once it's published, that's the published date. There's no yeah. adjusting it new or anything. Um, and as you said, the flip side is the way to update a video is, you know, I, I release like a part two or hey, here's this, here's the uh, an updated yeah. improvement to the video I did last year. And eventually I actually yeah. go through about once a year and I um, I now have a, a yearly review in January where I, I look at anything that I actually want to delete. Because sometimes I forget a new features come out, which has made this video technique yeah irrelevant or wrong and i want to make sure Absolutely. people are watching yeah. that so yeah. that's actually another important thing maybe to mention is uh if you are writing something that is let's assume there is a product or feature limitation you have to do this five-step process which is correct today but maybe someday they might release a feature that will shorten this or you uh, so it's good to just have a review cycle to make sure that anything you've written doesn't become either irrelevant or even worse actually like the a bad practice um 
and I had a couple people over the years who would comment on a video like, why are you still doing it this way? Oh, okay, well one, this video is three years old, so like take it with a grain of salt. But yes, I probably should just delete this video. And now I have a, a reminder on my calendar once a year to review in January to do a an annual scrub yeah, of yeah. content, which it's a lot to content to go through at, at this point. Yep. I love some of the comments oh, in here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They want to know how do you keep yourselves fit too. and young. Yeah, your 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 looks remain constant like bar. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, okay, my my technique is simple. I lie. Ask me how many, you know. Ask me my age. How old are how you? Old are you? Twenty five. There you go. I um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was already twenty five. Like several years ago. I know, but you know, you lie. You start lying. You continue to lie. Someone will believe something, so that's fine. There's that's a fine. phrase that a <clears> relative <throat> told me. It's funny you say 25 because I, I had a, an uncle once yeah. telling me that once you hit 25, you're going to keep getting older, but mentally, you always have an image of yourself at like that age. That's the yeah. like yeah, yeah. old adult. You just start breaking down, but you always think of yourself in that form, you know, somewhere in your 20s. That's, I, I apply this rule, uh, yeah, completely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. So one of the things that I, I did actually want to talk about is books. Um, yep. so that, you know, I, I haven't written one yet. I've at this point been asked a couple of times by uh, PACT and you know, just a bunch of other, uh, a press, et cetera, yeah. to, to write books. Uh, it's also, it seems like an insane time commitment for one. Um, so I guess two questions, what, what have been some of your takeaways from writing them over the years and, and also get, considering how quickly software changes today because at least with excel you had a primary release cycle every three to four years and it didn't change that much you've got security updates but it features were fairly consistent so you write a book it's going to be relevant for years you write a book today on power bi with screenshots in 12 months that could be a drastically different because of the you know the product iterations are so much faster so like what is your i guess both opinions on just writing in general then also its relevancy now with the increasing cadence of uh changes in, in the software so I, I don't know alberto if you want to 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 start first but otherwise i i can start no that i know that i'm gonna take that needs the same time to explain <laughs> point, i no. think well something that probably makes me look much oh not much but just old is that i think that today's software is running just a bit too fast there's not enough time to, I know. Yes. You asked me to start first. So no, what is that no, pause no, button you were talking before, okay. right? That's a good right. moment to stop, no, Marcus. Just, just, just pause it. <laughs> no, this will be great. Like I, I like very, two different opinions. I think this that is good. That would be great. Yeah. No, software is running really fast. Meaning that uh, a lot of features are where they start and you can say that they are actually quite never finished because they will be replaced by something new quite soon. And there's not enough time to consolidate features and build the ecosystem that is needed in order to, to really uh, master some, some technology. If you think about DAX, DAX is uh, 12 years old. So it's really young. Yeah. And 15 years old. So you're saying that half of my life has been yet. spent on DAX. So, yeah. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> yes. you were not even a teenager when DAX were, was here. It's impressive or you've been 25 or 12. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting Which, position. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. With that said, you are right. If you write a book about with screenshot, if you write a book like mm, what we call the Click Next book, so the book that tells you exactly step by step how to follow a procedure in order to obtain your goal. Mm -hmm. because they aim to teach you the user interface and all yeah. the tiny details. That's going to be old very, very soon. And that's yep. one of the reasons why we decided to go with DAX and to focus more on theoretical topics. So mm -hmm. we decided to write about DAX. We tried to reduce to a minimum the number of screenshots about the tool, which has publish the result, so like the result of a pivot table or the result with a matrix, uh, because that is going to be stable. And even though the user interface might change, the numbers are still there. They, they do not change. 
the only book we wrote, uh, well, I think the last book we wrote with the user interface was the Introducing Power BI. That is a book that we didn't want to write exactly for this reason, because mm -hmm. we thought it would be old very, very soon. But that uh, was a free book, so we didn't sell it. It was a free book that we published uh, yeah, for free. Therefore, as of today, that book is old. So the, the content, the, the concept and the user interface that we describe is no longer valid. Uh, but nobody can complain about that because that's the, the notebook and we are not planning to write anything about user interface in the last, in the next, uh, I don't think ever. <laughs> we will probably never write about user interface specifically for this problem. We still have the problem with the trainings yeah. because in the trainings we need to explain the yeah. details. Uh, yeah. And that's the reason why every now and then we need to reshoot the entire training uh, or part of it because things change. So with the last training we recorded, uh, the tabular one, we tried to split it into different modules uh, so that uh, each individual module can be replaced at some point. If things change or if the technology changes too much, uh, we can remove a part and replace it with a different one. But with books, uh, you cannot do that. Uh, exactly. So, Good. Uh, clearly, I have a different position. Um, I mean, now, in reality, I, I agree with what Alberto said, but in order to answer to your question, so the first question you should ask to yourself is, why do you want to write a book? That's uh, very important, right? Because uh, you may want to write a book because, one, you want to write a book just because you can say, I wrote a book. Two, uh, you yeah. want money. Three, you want um, recognition from the book community. Four, um, you want um, a goal to study something. Now, believe it or not, we always had this last uh, goal as the main reason to write a book. As Alberto said, the first book we wrote about DAX, we wrote it while we were learning DAX the first time. And when we have to create even just a video training, we discovered that preparing a training in, for a classroom or for uh, a video um, does not require you to go so deep in understanding a technology like what you have to do if you want to write a book on it. When you set the goal, I want to write a book on something, you really have to master that topic. There, there is no way you can feel confident in writing a book uh, unless you, you know, really are not responsible. Yeah. Because what you write, it will be there forever, more or less. And, and so if you write a very, very, very wrong thing, which is not just a small mistake, but a conceptual, you know, a conceptual error about how you describe something that should work in a way and you describe it another way, it's going to be there and stay forever. And so when we talk about your, you know, re your reputation uh, we, we, when you miss someone, and so, yes, writing a boot is something that will be part of your uh, resume, but at the same time, you don't want to be remembered for a book that was so bad, that had so many, you know, just one star, one star, one star on Amazon, like any, anybody, I yeah. mean, everybody will remember the book, but in a negative way. So you don't want this to happen. And because of that, you will spend time to, to write something, you know, that, that is correct and so on. And of course, there are different types of, uh, types of books. So yep. there are introductory books, books that probably don't have this critical aspect, but there are others where, especially when you want to challenge something in a technical way, even though you have a small audience for that book, that audience could be important for your career. So, so depending on your goal, you might have different reasons for, for, for writing a book. And just one wrong reason, writing a book for money, believe me, no, 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 I no. don't think there are jobs that have a hourly pay, uh, you know, the, the, the hourly fee that you can get for that job as low as the book. I, I don't think there is any. I don't think legally you could get paid no. that low. Like, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 you cannot, you cannot. Yeah, Legally, exactly. in many countries, where there is a, a minimum wage, <coughs> you, you will be out of law. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, That's like, in, 
Uh, when you first said that, even Alberto was sitting there shaking his head, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, every MVP that I've talked to, and I'd say there's a yep. bit of, uh, like, outside of a few exceptions for video courses, most usually don't sell at the same rate that you could just get billed hourly for the development hours that you put into it. Like, it, you know, that type of yeah. content creation is not something where, like, if you did that full time, you'd just be ranking in the dollars. Like, it's done for community contributions, for recognition, to learn, but it's, like, never go into to authoring. Yep. Because you're like, oh yeah, this is gonna be, it's gonna sell a hundred thousand copies, and I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm gonna make all this like, you know, I won't name names, but like some of the worst publishers, you might only get 10, 12, 15 percent of the of the profits, you know, off of that. So like, even if it does sell a hundred thousand copies, you're still not getting that much out of the yep. six hundred hours, maybe seven hundred hours that you put into writing it, you know, and uh, so, and that's one of the reasons that I have avoided it a bit. Uh, it, there is a feel a bit of prestige though that comes with a book that nothing else has like because it, it has to go through a, a level of checks and balances from i would say a reputable publisher that actually does do its due diligence on content which yeah. there are some who yeah. will publish more easily than others but um with a good name behind Absolutely. it that just mm -hmm. that's that's an instant badge of uh, skills and qualification that really nothing else has you get like an you know you get a location on amazon and you get that little author profile that pops up if you Google that person's name over on the right side in Google uh, once you have a book. So it really has like its own level but, of pr prestige that comes with it. But, but if I can tell one something about that, mm -hmm. uh, this is not specific to our industry. If, if you actually probably, there are other industries um, where writing a book is the same story as we have when you think about you know a niche market which is you know professional in one profession well we, we still talk about the same number of copies and this in the same market so in terms of, of possible revenues and compensation it's the same story you don't write a book to 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 get a living out of that you write a book because it's a way to advance in your profession to to get recognition but also to set a goal for yourself to study that topic more. Because if you have to explain this in a book, you have to really master the concept. And this is true also, I, I think, for, for a dentist, for a doctor, for uh, an engineer. I, I think it's pretty much the same. And I, I don't think it's different. So uh, it would be wrong to think that, um, oh, it's uh, these publishers that don't want to. No, come on. The, the, mar the size of the market is that one. So yeah. <laughs> If there was a larger market that the, the publisher the publisher simply has to sustain a, a other cost then we can discuss about you know there are different publishers i agree but also the publisher that pay more and that but but or, or that provide uh maybe they pay less but have a better reputation because they they spend more in the post-production stage but in any case we, we we talk about small difference in absolute terms you, you don't you cannot leave writing books uh, maybe there is someone that can do that, but there are exceptions, right? So maybe yeah. that you sell hundreds of thousands of copies of Excel, but Excel is also a market that has a lot of books. So it's, it's not easy to, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's not easy. So, I mean, I uh, almost think of it as like... With all that, go ahead, uh, Bartow. With all that said, if you have the creativity to write the next Harry Potter, go for that. Yeah. Oh, Don't yes. take our yes. advices and <laughs> go for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, to summarize, I, I like your both of your mentions that a big factor, I think, especially with book writing at least, is um, how detailed versus like UI driven is it? Things that are UI driven are going to be, are probably stale. Some, some screenshot in there is probably outdated by the time you publish it, if you took a screenshot six to eight months ago. Yeah. Um, but if you're doing technical, like code and other stuff where it's, you know, DAX has evolved and there's occasionally a time where like a pattern is replaced with a better syntax sugar pattern. But for the most part, the, the core language mm -hmm doesn't change that much. So, you know, a, a book that you've written yeah, four years yeah. ago, 85, 90% still relevant. Uh, a five-year-old book on, you know, building a report or a dashboard in Power BI is, is almost useless uh, at that point. So like that, that's just, a, I think, a really important factor to consider is uh, what will change and when. Um, and it, it depends on how, how UI driven, I'd say, the, the content is. I had a, I like Mark's question that actually just but, popped up here. <laughs> um, it, did you have a comment or yeah. can I, okay. <laughs> what what do you question? guys? Yeah, um, what do you guys do on Instagram? I don't see any relevance much for it related to like Power BI, but as he's mentioning, like businesses need to have an Instagram presence with 
real stories posts. Uh, I, I can't imagine tutorials can fit into that very well, though. Well, let me well, quickly answer to this because it's very simple. When I read IG, I didn't even know that IG stands for Instagram. It's Instagram. So that gives you an idea about how confident <laughs> this tells I'm with social you networks. How old is Alberto? Is how old Alberto is? In IG. Just what is IG? <laughs> and by the way, I, yeah. IG is not even. I mean, as of today, it's all. It's also becoming less relevant because every you know new generations are going TikTok. TikTok. Not IG, now, no, so, yeah, now we need a TikTok yeah. account. Yeah. So we where we do yeah. like this is Marco trying. Comments. Good. This is Marco trying to feel young. TikTok. Yeah, no, no, I want Marco to see you on TikTok, Marco. I, I, I don't. I don't like TikTok. I don't like. I don't follow Instagram, but I know them because I, I have to know the business. Then I do my personal choices. But yep. from the, from a brand perspective, uh, it's complex. How do you? I mean, how do you market? Yeah. It's uh, it's complex. It's not impossible, but it's complex, and it's it's also. You know, if you, uh, the, 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 I don't know if you have seen Miss Excel, which uh, who is a um, is a girl who creates content for Excel, and she has a TikTok uh, channel, I think, and also Instagram, of course, and then she sells videos on, on internet. But the, the the she 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 created a new way to deliver content, which. Uh, uh, is something completely new, but the the reality is that you have to have an attitude to do that. You you cannot just invent yourself, like uh, you know someone who is good for creating videos where you dance and you show concerts in Excel. I mean, it's very creative. I like it, but at the same time, I recognize okay, this is not something I can do. So I, I don't even try. It would be it would be yeah. you know hilarious probably, but not effective. Even for YouTube, there's there's like increasing degrees of personality that need to be added for a platform like youtube has some flair and a little fun you know that can, needs to be added to it sometimes but then by the time you go to tick uh, all the way up to TikTok, like you need to solve a dax problem while riding a unicycle and juggling or something at this at the same time in 10 seconds or less so it's yeah, it's an and interesting the, medium uh, audience, for sure yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah but the span of attention that you dedicate to instagram and TikTok <laughs> is much smaller than what you dedicate to to a YouTube video, usually. Oh, of course. So it, yeah. it, it's also different. So, if I was to ever do anything like that, it honestly might just be like a, a GIF clip that's a couple seconds to, with a link to like, hey, go check out the full video on YouTube if you actually want to watch this. It, it would just, at that point, it's a promotional tool. It's like when I create a video, I post to LinkedIn, sometimes with a GIF uh, that shows a, a quick mm -hmm. snippet of like the cool thing that I just did, and then you know for people to check out the video. But that's the only use I can really see those platforms is if anything further exposure or posts to then link back to the actual content. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, we, we thought about that, but as of today, we don't see a way to, to be effective. There is, there are also limitations in the, in the, in the platform yeah. about what you can do in terms of links that are not very, very nice. So at the moment, we don't have any plan to, to create content for those platforms. There's a, I was going to say there's a joke in there somewhere because YouTube's not available in China. If you want to enter the Chinese market, just post your stuff to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I mean, it's owned by, by yeah, you know, true. a Chinese true, true, company. True, true. So. It's true. It's true. <laughs> mm. I have a couple of other good questions. I know we're getting close to the hour. Yep. So I will say I'll, I'll try to get through what I have on here. If anybody else has some remaining ones yep. that are relevant to the subject matter, because okay. otherwise I can imagine... Uh, for the audience, like we could easily spend probably an hour answering questions that you guys have, but uh, yeah, let's let's, course, let's get a few <laughs> more uh, co um, topic related ones in here. So Matthias had okay. a, a great one. Um, during the lengthy lockdown period, uh, has your approaches to content creation changed at all? Uh, I'll just give a quick thing and then let you guys jump in. Um, I started the live streaming, mm. you know, during lockdown. Like I, I missed the community engagements. I missed having our MVP summit in person, and I wanted to kind of connect well, more. With, so that's why I, I started. Uh, that's that's the one thing that changed for me is I, I started live streaming after COVID. So they have there, two things happen. Uh, for a complete pure coincidence, we started our YouTube channel when you know more or less when the pandemic began. But the reality is that we already planned to do that. So of course, what changed is that we had more time mm -hmm. because we cut we had to cut. Um, 
all the all the travel, right? We we were used to spend maybe fifty percent of our time traveling the world and delivering classroom classes, and this was gone in one month. And so we we rescheduled everything to anticipate the production of content that we would have planned in a longer uh, time span. At the same time, the world changed and the request for uh, video content increased. Uh, we have seen this from many metrics. So uh, the two things you know, happen at the same time. And so we naturally increase the production of video content uh, in a way that we, it would not have been possible before. So as of today, we could estimate that we could probably have less than 50% of the video content we produce so far, maybe more, maybe more than 50 We will produce less than 50% of the content we have now. Um, and that, that is one thing that, of course, changed. And, and, and we also changed the um, uh, prioritization of, of uh, other content that will be delivered online, right? Which means the video training we produced last year, also the DAX patterns the previous year, what we will produce this year, and, 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 and many other things. So there are many things that changed because we had to you know, adjust. So th there was an impact, of course. Uh, what we didn't do, we didn't deliver the classes live on uh, on uh, you know Zoom or Teams or something like that because we we had experience about that. We don't like the um, the, the the result is not effective. The result is not effective. So the only reason why people want to do that is because they think that they have a. I think that basically because they are committed to stay that, at that time at that you know for that amount of time online. But the interaction they have is minimal, is minimal. And so I, I think that they are, they cannot be focused for a so long time on a screen. And in our opinion, it doesn't work. It is much better to have a well-produced video content, well-indexed, like what we produced, we try to produce, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you, 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 can, uh, you can better follow the content. And then you can spend time asking questions in the forum or, uh, engaging in activities online, but when you have questions and the questions, uh, you have the questions after you practice, not when you are listening yeah. the the lecture. And so that is uh, what this, in my personal opinion, doesn't work for the live classes. But of course, it's 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 our experience. I see that many other um, many other courses have been had switched in in the online delivery and. Probably yeah. they work. So our experience is that it, they, they, with our content, they don't work well. That, that's our experience. And I think, I think that's, that's a, a good insight. It, it's also pointed out to the fact that, that I've said to clients for years is the biggest learning with any training is usually that the, the, um, the co-development day or the, the hands-on day after the uh, like structured training yeah. that's just you know following through the course. Because then it's, oh, I have all these mm -hmm. questions now. Let's play with your data set and solve some problems that you guys have at work with your data now that you have these new skills. Um, so it's, it sounds like you do, I mean, honestly, a similar practice is I encourage people to watch recorded videos if they want to spend like maybe half a day, like a few hours in a brainstorm mm -hmm. session working through their data afterwards um, on a virtual call, yep. that's usually a lot more productive and valuable for their time versus, hey, let's yep. all be on a Zoom call for seven hours and bang our heads against a wall. Like no, it, no. I love training in person. I, I feed off the energy of the room. It's amazing. Like I, I really, really enjoy just you know, being in a, a, a room full of people, but having to do that on a camera for that time, not being able to see faces, like no. it, it's very exhausting for me. Like I, I don't enjoy no, it nearly it as much. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. Agreed. Um, what about you, Alberto? But, but it doesn't work for the teacher. It doesn't oh. work for the student, in my opinion. So both. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Alberto, uh, did you have anything as well for uh, just comments before I can, uh, on this <clears> question? <throat> no, I mean, Mark explained that, uh, already enough basically we have a lot more time than before therefore we started uh working a lot more about videos and books and content just because we no longer have to travel that's it yeah exactly this is, i mean and like my upgraded office is a big thing that i i moved from a one bedroom to a two bedroom condo so like i can't keep working at a small tiny desk i need i need a big standing desk and a larger monitor <laughs> if i'm going to be <laughs> at home the entire year so yeah 
I think a lot of people apparently like home upgrades and interior design was a giant marketing COVID. Uh, yeah. I actually, when I moved, I actually was trying to get a designer to help me. And apparently there, everyone in Seattle, there was like a four month wait to use any single interior designer because they were booked out because everybody is like upgrading their homes because they had to stay at home. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's an yeah. interesting like market that just skyrocketed because everybody wanted to, yeah, to yeah, upgrade yeah. their their home environment. Um, I'll do uh, two. Makes let's sense. do a couple more questions related. Uh, one that I actually do like. Uh, Steven had a great one about uh, what content do you want for your next book? <laughs> Marco's face is great just there. I'm I'm not sure whether I'm understanding the question. <laughs> What Does do you, what, that so, mean what are we working? Yes, what are you working on? Do you have a next book in mind? And if so, so what is the, the, the next book that you're working on? Okay, the short answer <laughs> is that we always have a next book in mind. Yeah. And the long answer is uh, we always have a next book in mind. Meaning that we are working, of course, on more content. I don't think we are ready to disclose yeah. anything so far. Not even yeah. about yeah. timings and anything else. The thing yeah, is, the, the ecosystem of Power BI is in, is becoming really huge. Yeah. So doing books and doing content requires a lot more time than it used to be. Therefore, any project is yeah. going to be quite a long one. And the next book and the next training, <laughs> they're going to take us a, a, a lot of time. Yeah. There's actually. Uh, I know I did besides, I totally the, go ahead, Marco. That. No, I know, I know. If I can tell you something more, even I, I will not tell you because the, the the real issue, which is real, is that we actually um, we are not sure about what will uh, what we will release first. So we are working because we, you know, a book is something that requires, in the best case scenario, nine months. And it is absolutely the best case scenario. So usually it takes much more. I think, Alberto, what, how long it was writing the second edition of DAX? One I year? don't know. It was more I than one year because no I remember it was, since the start. Yeah, it was, it was a long time. Um, so we actually started to write something. We still don't know whether we will... Uh, be able to complete the book and to publish it in a meaningful way, which means that in a worst case scenario, we will publish another book first, which we didn't start yet. And this one will become something else, not a book. So yeah, it, it's, we don't want to commit on something we will not deliver. So. <laughs> well, yeah, like but it, actually this is what yeah. we do. So, but, but even though the, the, the content we're writing, okay, we're writing with a, Again, the idea is that the main goal is to go deep enough on a content so that we are able to master that concepts and to publish, you know, videos, articles, and, and, and training, whatever. If we go until the end of the book production, it will also become a book. Uh, it is just not guaranteed that it will become a book too. That's the only, the only difference. Okay. So, like, it, it's nice that you can at least transfer to multiple mediums if you end up creating enough expertise and content on the on a subject matter like wait this can be both a course and we you know all of our notes yeah, can yeah. be now rescripted into a into a book yep uh, let's see is there any other i think we're just about ready to wrap up um you know it's the, the, the last one that I'll, I'll i'll end with is it's more of a broader question around conferences and maybe just presenting but james yeah. had a one a lot earlier just are there any conferences that you guys are looking forward oh. to this is a nice question because yeah. it involves traveling and I like traveling. So um, yes. we should be in London at Secret Beats in Same March, here. right? Mm -hmm. Then Alberto, you have something in Netherlands, I think. Uh, yes, but I in don't April? remember that. Let me check. Will you yeah, be there, at there is a RBI conference. Next I have a lot of things actually. No, the end of March, yeah, the Power BI, day, Power BI Day is in Utrecht. Nice. Okay. Be, ah, so uh, in March, in March, okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are your and favorite the other conferences? Is, uh... Then the park. I was just saying, no, like, uh, of the, of the, what, everything that you have scheduled for the year besides SQL bits, so are there any other, like, big call out favorites that, that you're really excited about? I, I think the past summit is the obvious one. Yeah. I mean, if, 
if if we can travel in November, I, I yes. want to go to Seattle and, you know, it would be a great reunion with a lot of people we didn't see uh, for, at that mm. point, at least three years. Yeah. Yeah, three years. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, that, that, would be, that would be the big one. Um, probably there, there is another conference in uh, Denmark in September, uh, but I don't remember the date. Uh, yeah, a, a Power BI conference in, in Denmark. That will that be uh, going to Power BI there. Next Steps from Yoast, right? Power yeah, BI Next yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm talking with him as yeah. well. So I'll, I'll actually probably see you in, Mar in, a, in a little over a month um, at SQL Bits. And then I'll oh, see, yes, see, see you again in, um, uh, yeah, yeah. at Legoland this time. Because it's going to be... Legoland, in, yeah. yeah. Bill, yeah billion, that's, uh, that's the uh, idea. Yeah. That's the idea. I like that he's having a whole day for the, for the presenters, that he's just going to take us all out to Legoland. So like... Yeah, no, that that that's gonna be like a yeah fun a added bonus to the trip. Yeah, yeah I mean it's Legoland. So. Yeah, I mean honestly, that's probably the reason. I I, I love SQL Bix, you know, and Alex Whittles has done done a great job yeah. over the years with it. But of all the conferences, no, nobody has Legoland that's that's included with that. So the the home like giant Legolands, I, I the the child in me is definitely excited yeah. to go to that. And I also have a couple of like Star Wars kits that I've even built as yeah, an adult. But... So. <laughs> Yeah, but I love London, so... Oh, uh, yeah. I, I haven't been in London for two years now. It's... Uh, oh, I, I I have friends there, so, yeah. I, I just have to go. <laughs> uh, I know Mark... I look forward uh, to it. Mark will be there as well. So, like, we, we definitely should do a little, uh, like, MVP get-together when we're there. Uh, all the, the Power BI yeah, guys. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Um, yeah, course. like, uh, I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, I'm actually, like, just for people okay. tuning in... Um, I'm on my last day of developing uh, a new Microsoft exam that's coming out later on, which has been a blast uh, oh. the, from the people that I've been working on. But uh, this is my my final day that I get to go back to and actually hop on a call and finish writing exam questions. Um, but yeah, uh, nice. it's. I don't think this title's been announced yet, but at least the DA300 will be coming out in like a month. Uh, that's the replacement for the... Uh, is about Power BI? Is something sort of for Power BI or there's in general two, or just... Yeah, so there's two yeah. total... Um, because they're doing the role based, so uh, from from yeah. the, the the tool based, which I think is actually a, a great thing, because it it's hard to test for everything in the previous one. Uh, the next one will just be the Power BI analyst, and there's also going to be a okay. kind of a, a higher level one for Azure Enterprise Data Analyst that's going to test both yeah. basically yeah, yeah. everything in Power BI, but also Purview and Synapse yeah. and Databricks and understanding how to inter integrate the two of them, um, which will uh, and that's what yeah. I'm working on, and that will be uh, May or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I loved having this this on today. Cool. This was a really fun conversation um, that, that we've um, been able to have, and I'm glad I was able to get you both on. And we got through pretty much got free without any uh, um, <laughs> tech issues, so that was great. Okay, good. Everyone, thanks. So, so see you much. in London. Yeah, Very yeah, yeah I'll see you in like I, both of you, right? We'll, we'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I will um, see you two in a little over a month uh, from now. And otherwise, enjoy the rest Definitely. of your Friday night. Yes. And everyone, thanks for, for tuning in. And you I'll too. see you all next week. All right. Cheers. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Bye, guys. Hello, folks. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships as well. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on social media to help pass on this awesome content and to help the channel grow. So until next time.